Hello, I'm Sivam Krish. Today we're going to discuss design space. What is design space? Is it something that's dark, deep, and mysterious? Yes, it is. But this too has a design space. Let's look at that. Let's take a look at the cereal box and the design space that it represents. Now in order to represent the design space you need to represent the design in a very elegant way. So let's do what engineers do. Let's create a three axes X, Y and Z because if you do that you can then represent the box with a single point that relates to X, Y and Z. So what this means is that with a single point we can represent the geometry of the box. Not only this box, but all these boxes that we see in a supermarket shelf. So if you then go and plot the geometry of all these boxes, you will see something like this. right? So they are a collection of points that represent all the boxes. Uh, perhaps you know you can call this uh, the design space representing all these boxes in X, Y and Z axis right but this is just geometry now there are other things that are important for the design like weight right now when we have weight where do we put this weight we don't have a fourth axis we can only see three axes so there are even other things like you know paper type graphics color and volume so we get stuck here we really can't now represent this all these parameters in a way we can see it. Now this is an imaginary space where more than three parameters, maybe 100, maybe 200 parameters are represented as a collection of points. Right. So design space is something that represents a collection of points based on various aspects of the design. So that is what we call a design space. There are many other types of per spaces. Uh, one is called performance space. Performance space uh, represents uh, the measurable performance of a design. Say for example in this design you have a cost, you have weight and you have damage tolerance. So if you plot these designs they are distributed like this and this could be called a performance space. But here we have only shown three axes. It could be a lot more axes than this. And when we can't do that we have to use our imagination and think of it as that space. Now, there's something called preference space, and preference space is what people prefer. Now, for the same cereal box, the preference of kids may be different from the preference of older people. Now, kids may not really be concerned too much about the price. They might like boxes that are actually lighter in weight, whereas older people may have a different um, set of requirements and wishes. So, preference space depends very much on the likes and dislikes of people and it's a fairly complex area. Now let's look at the constraint space because this is really interesting. right? Now as this design is manufactured you will see that it has to be cut out of paper and that paper comes in a certain roll size so that's that's a constraint to start with. Then you have to make boxes. Making boxes has a whole lot of constraints in itself. Then these boxes have to pack into this vehicle Right. And this vehicle, uh, you want to transport it efficiently, so the boxes have to be a certain size. Then it comes into this supermarket shelf, and these shelves have certain sizes and, and therefore constraints. Right, And the kid has to be able to grab this, so that has to a maximum length. And this box has to fit in a home shelf, which has constraints and that constraints and so on. So the constraint space represents uh, the, the limits on, on the design in in this case in XYZ axis right and if you really then plot all these constraints uh, perhaps in this case it looks like boxes so you have a series of boxes that limits the constraint uh, into designs that are viable and the designs that are viable are, are the ones are the intersection of all these boxes which is really a very very tiny box because all these things help you to limit the design or box it in to a very small viable region. So this is 
the viable region. This is the region where the design is viable. And, and here, this means that this point here moves around this really tiny region. That's, that's the design space. That's all you can design, right? Now, let's look at this design problem in a larger context. And let's look at the different spaces. Now, the design space is really the space of all the design possibilities. Right. Now this is at concept stage and this is at the final stage of the design. Now as we progress through concept to final stage, there are different types of uh, spaces. We then have something called solution space and this represents the region of the design space that you're looking at with a particular design. So in this case, you know, if you're going to make this out of uh, cut out cardboard, then you know, using this you're only exploring a certain limit. Of, of space and that space is further limited by constraint space because that represents the viable region right now this is on the early stage of the design now as the design is finalized as it matures you have something called performance space because you can then start measuring what the cost is what the transportability and volume and so on i mean measurements may be different for different people but still there is some chance and some hope of muscle, uh, of measurement and then you can plot these things in what's called a performance space. So as you can see in the early stage you're looking at feasibility and constraining it within a feasible region and the later stage you're using it for evaluation to kind of select the design that you like. So as design progresses from start to finish you will find that there are various spaces or you can think in terms of various spaces. right? Now, a particular case of, of design exploration is this thing called parametric design, right? So when we represent the solution space, uh, normally we do it in CAD, and if we do it in CAD, we have a CAD model, right? And we also have parameters that drive the CAD model, and we have tables. Tables will give you numbers that drive the CAD model, and the combination of this then represents the design space. So parametric design is about l exploring a solution space based on parameters, based on a CAD model. It's a particular type of, of design exploration. So I hope you have a much clearer idea now of what design space is, is all about. It's a way of representing the many aspects and characteristics of design in a number of axes. What happens in design is, you know, at the beginning of the design, uh, the designer is given a, a blue sky kind of freedom to, to think about all the things that they wish to do and there are absolutely no constraints. The reality is fairly soon within the design process, the designer gets boxed in. All these constraints limit what the designer can do, right? So then he comes up with a very tiny design space. Now, if he's hired to create uh, an interesting cereal box and he goes to his boss with this tiny, you know, design space with, with uh, you know, a few centimeters or millimeters change here and there, what do you think will happen to him? He'll get sacked, right? So designers don't like to accept that, you know, this is the space they've got. So they, the process of working is to, to, to deny these constraints, to, to pretend that they don't exist and, and deal with them. Uh, as as the last stages, right? Now, let's look at conflicts because it's an interesting story. And this was started by John Harvey Kellogg uh, called The Serial King. And it was, um, it, you know, it's an interesting story because it was initially marketed, you know, for people who have what's called coffee headaches, you know, people who had drank coffee in the morning. And it was claimed to be beneficial for appendix, malaria, loose teeth, and the brain, right? So this is an extremely successful product and it's consumed in millions of tons, right? Now, the interesting thing is that it was also one of the first products to be specifically marketed for children, designed to grab their attention. So this is what designers do when it comes to designing cereal boxes they design the graphics to attract children. 
Despite more than 2,000 million tons of cereals being consumed, cereal box design is very conservative, right? You see designs like this only in design schools and design competitions. The real cereal boxes are what we see because they have been boxed in by constraints. Now, this is a dilemma I want to leave you with, right? Now, if you accept those constraints, you're going to be boxed in. If you don't accept it, you'll be boxed in anyway. Now, the uncomfortable thing about parametric design or generative design is that it forces you to accept these constraints at the beginning of the design process and forces you to deal with them. This lecture comes to you from the lost continent from the city of Adelaide. Thank you for watching.